the week that's dedicated to platform studies was social media studies, or more specifically, platform studies, and even more specifically, Twitter studies. The title is called Platform Studies Debanalizing Twitter, and, and, and that's ultimately where we're going to go today. I'm going to start by talking about uh, the, the notion of the term platform, and, um, and in some sense, why the term platform was chosen um, as the means by which to describe or to dub or to frame social media. Uh, so what's a platform? Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about the kind of discursive work that it does. So how does, how does a, how, how does a, why does the word platform work? Um, secondly, I'm going to talk about platforms uh, or the critique of platforms um, as uh, walled gardens, as these um, sort of closeted spaces that are, that in some sense um, do not comply, if you will, um, to, uh, to an open web. So, so, so the contrast between, let's say, the World Wide Web, it's the spirit of the World Wide Web, and social media on the other hand, um, which, is, um, which is arguably um, anything but open, uh, or does not, ca cannot be described in the same terms as, 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 as the web. And that's, that's why it has its own, it's, that's why it has its own notion, uh, arguably, social media. Um, and then finally, I'm going to talk about the platform as, a, as, a, as, a, as data, or as a data set. Um, and in particular, what one can do with, uh, with platform data. Um, so, uh, and then ultimately come back to the critique of um, the platform as, as walled garden when the terms of service change. So when, or the, or the interface settings change. Uh, so when platforms become unstable, uh, when, they, when, uh, when, when the APIs suddenly change, when something's deprecated. So, what, so, the, um, so the kinds of data um, that then uh, are no longer available. I'm going to talk then specifically about Twitter, and in particular, um, I'm going to periodize the history of Twitter as an object as well as an object of study. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk about three Twitters, in fact, Twitter 1, Twitter 2, and Twitter 3. Uh, and and uh, arguably, Twitter, uh, arguably, they all continue to endure, uh, Twitter 1, being the original Twitter, um, where it's all about uh, ambient friend following, so the, the intimate Twitter, the Twitter amongst friends, and then the second Twitter, Twitter two, is the is the is the sort of news is the is the revolutionary Twitter. Suddenly, Twitter became something else, um, and then ultimately, <clears throat> the Twitter we have today, which is uh, which is in some sense a generic data set which people use to study virtually anything. Um, and we're going to talk critically about, about this as well. Uh, <clears throat> and the question that we'll ask, of course, is the, is the, sort of the, the digital methods question is, well, how can we use Twitter for research? And when we study Twitter, uh, are we only studying Twitter? Are we just studying social media? Or are we studying uh, societal condition? Can we use it as a social research tool? And if so, how? Uh, OK. So let me start with, um, with this notion of platform. Uh, so social media in the English language um, is introduced oftentimes and talked about as a, as a platform. And when, when, um, when people use the term platform, it's, it's important that you, that you know the kind of discursive work that's being done. And when I say discursive work, how does discourse, or how do words, become productive to reach uh, goals? Um, and uh, platform, in particular, is is this kind of quite a feel-good word. Um, if you say that you're going to make a platform, it sounds very open and something that that everyone wants to, in some sense, contribute to, join, etc. Now, why is that? What, what, why does this term? Why, why does platform feel so good? Um, <clears throat> so 
This is um, some of the work that's been done by Tarleton Gillespie. Uh, the it's a piece in New Media and Society 2010 called The Politics of, of Platforms. And he introduces uh, the politics of platforms by talking about the four senses of the term platform. Um, so the architectural sense, um, the raised, if I were standing on, if we were at the university theater and I was standing on the, the stage I would, or on a little box or something giving a talk in front of a lectern, I would be on a platform. It's a raised surface. Um, it's also something that's used in politics. A platform, so in Dutch it would be a, uh, a programma, uh, so a partij, from a politica partij, a programma. It's a, in English that's a platform. And, <clears throat> and so it has, it, it does politics, it has stances. Um, and it's a set of, set of positions, so it's thought of um, as, as something that is political. Um, it is also a computational term. Um, a platform is oftentimes used um, uh, computationally, meaning some, something from which you launch an application. Um, and, then, and then figuratively and most importantly, it's something um, that gives you voice. Um, that, in some sense, something that you can sort of launch yourself from. Um, and this is, I think, one of the more important ideas uh, behind the use of the term platform for social media companies. So why are they using the term platform? Um, well, um, one of the reasons, according to uh, Gillespie, is that it gives you the sense um, that you can launch yourself from it. So it gives you the idea that, that if you join, um, then it will empower you. It will, give, it will, it will grant you voice, um, that it's a voice-giving voice um, surface that you can launch yourself from. And so this is, this is, uh, this is the idea. This is, what, this is the kind of feel-good idea about a, about a, about a platform. Um, but what Gillespie argues is actually they're far closer to traditional media than one uh, would imagine when, uh, if you look at it in, in a little bit more detail. Now, why is that? Um, <clears throat> well, one of the reasons is that platforms like, um, like software, like operating systems, um, wall you in. They bring you into a particular ecosystem, into a particular media ecology, and uh, in, onto a particular island, uh, uh, where then, then a, a number of things happen. Uh, where, for example, um, one becomes dependent on the particular applications, or um, and where you where the, the costs of leaving are so much higher, uh, at least in, in, your, in your own mind, than, than of, of staying. Uh, and then all the various applications, for example, it was an art project, I don't know if you've heard of it, the sort of Facebook suicide machine. Um, and you know, sort of trying to wean yourself off or, 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 or get your, uh, cut, the, cut the Facebook cord. Um, is, is, has become quite difficult uh, because in that particular ecology now also um, the val you see the, the, the value proposition. The more people who join, the more valuable it is and the harder it is to leave uh, because you are now um, in some sense dependent on it. Or How many of you, if, uh, if I may ask, has left Facebook? Oh, okay. So, two. We can talk about that uh, a little bit, um, um, perhaps later. I'm wondering if there was any therapy required or, or how you're doing. Um, in any case, I want to talk about um, the critique of these, of these walled gardens, uh, of, of these so-called platforms um, that are very, very hard to leave. And if you do leave them, um, then uh, there are arguably repercussions for your, for your social life because so much of sociality these days now derives from or is organized by or is, is mobilized through um, social media. So the, the first critique 
of a platform or of Walled Gardens concerns um, the question of its writability. So a platform, sort of in a computational sense, is one that's, that is fully uh, writable. So one that allows you to, um, that is, one that is writerly, fully writable, also writerly, in the sense that, that you can, you can uh, author it. Um, uh, and you can launch something from it. Now, uh, it, it, it's interesting if you, if you think about Facebook, and, and we can talk about uh, Twitter as well. I mean, of course, there, there, there are any number of different policies that uh, make uh, the question of the extent of its writability a, a, a critical one. Um, so there are um, ideas of the extent to which uh, these particular uh, platforms, first of all, are content neutral. So can you put any, are they, are they merely a delivery system, sort of like the telephone or what the internet, um, uh, or at least in the internet's architecture is meant to be? Um, a content neutral uh, delivery system, and, and, and this a lot, this is a, a sort of entryway into the famous uh, net neutrality debate. Uh, it comes from this particular principle. Um, the idea that, that, um, that uh, what is delivered through the medium um, um, does not, does, is, is, um, is indiscriminate. You do, you do not discriminate against particular forms of content, that it's content neutral. Um, now, there are any number of different moments where you can ask yourself the question about the content neutrality of, of, of particular platforms. Um, the Facebook uh, has had any number of very, very well-known uh, moments where particular content, pictures of uh, uh, mothers breastfeeding their children is probably the, one of the more famous ones. But anyway, there's a, there's a in some sense, um, there is an army of, of workers called, um, euf quite euphemistically, content moderators, uh, which work uh, for Facebook. There's quite a famous uh, or a well-known piece in, in Wired magazine not so long ago on the content moderators in, 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 the, in the context of the new digital economy and the kind of new jobs that are available in the, in the digital economy. And these content moderators uh, apply this quite a, quite a large... Um, sort of handbook of, of regulations and which have been circulated on, on, the, on the net. So you can find versions of, 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 these, of these handbooks which are about what kind of content is, is, is violates um, uh, Facebook's term, terms of service. Um, there are other uh, examples. One um, is, a, is from another well-known media ecology or walled garden and that is, and that is Apple. Uh, you may or may not know that uh, uh, when we move from the, uh, the so-called open web, which is then governed by laws of countries, to, um, to social media and to platforms, which then are governed by the sort of terms of those companies as well as the laws of countries. But, but you introduce this new, new layer, if you will, of content moderation. And, and you may or may not be aware that any number of different apps that have been put on the App Store have been banned um, by Apple. Um, there are um, uh, lists of them online. And, and you should look them up. Um, uh, at first, they're humorous. Um, you'll go through them. So this one, um, this was a, this was a, an app uh, where you would throw uh, a shoe at the president. Now, this was a famous incident in uh, um, uh, after, uh, during after during the Iraq War, uh, where the greatest insult that you could that you could uh, have is having your sh in in uh, in Iraq is having uh, having your shoe thrown at you. Anyways, it was, so this was turned into a game which was which was banned. Um, this is also a game. This was the countdown to the to the end of the George W. Bush era before Obama won. Uh, this is uh, this is the, the the countdown freedom time. Um, this also was banned. 
Um, this is a particularly interesting game where, um, where you are a drug dealer um, and you sell um, acid, cocaine, ecstasy, PCP, heroin, weed, shrooms, meth, um, and and you in New York City and and uh, and you have to sort of maximize your sales um, in different neighborhoods. That was banned. Um, this was one of my favorite ones, where you could take a, a selfie and put it um, uh, in place of the of the Messiah, um, and um, and and become me so holy. Um, that was banned. Uh, this one, um, this one's a, a, a kind of a game where, you, where it's a sort of first-person shooter, where you go into a school, um, and um, that was banned. The South Park. It's interesting. This one uh, was also f because of because of the language. Um, that was also also banned. Um, yeah, this sort of, I mean, I, I don't know, the, the native English speakers can explain this one perhaps to the non-natives if you don't get it, what, what the word flatulence means. But anyway, it's a, this is a, let's say, a, let, let's call it a farting app. Uh, I've said it. Uh, that was banned. Um, yeah, this was also, this was a, this, this was also banned where you turn your iPhone into a, a, a stabbing instrument. It was just as a um, this was for Obama uh, on a trampoline um, in the in the in the White House. This this was also banned, um, and there are more of them. And there are and there are also more recent ones. Syrian Endgame, uh, a, a, a game uh, where you're uh, at at war in, in on the ground in, in Syria. That was that was recently banned, um, and 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 the list goes on. Now, if if you um, after the death of Steve Jobs, the, the, the question of um, the extent to which uh, the, the policies will be as, as strict. Uh, Jobs um, is famously uh, quoted um, uh, when asked about why are these apps being banned, is sort of famously quoted as saying that uh, why, would, or why would we want to, especially the political ones, especially the, the ones uh, um, that critique um, George Bush, why would why would we want to uh, be offensive to roughly half of our customers? Uh, what's the point of that? So it's about ideas of of, of being uh, of apps uh, being being offensive. Um, so here you have a very very clear uh, example of the sh of what happens in the shift or what can happen in the shift from the open web. Um, to the to to the walled garden, to the platform, to social media, where content is is no longer distributed neutrally, but is vetted. Um, and the question is, who gets to vet? Uh, who makes the decisions? Um, and uh, what and what are the consequences of the of the vetting decisions? I think one of the most interesting um, pieces. Uh, is uh, our comments um, on um, on on the walled garden at least uh, at least in retrospect is this particular work by Armin uh, Heinrich a, a German uh, media artist so in in uh, 2009 I believe he put this app on the App Store um, and the app is called I am rich um, and it Cost the maximum amount uh, that an app can cost, which, um, which in the uh, which in the U.S. is nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. So an app can't be more than a thousand dollars. In um, Europe, it's seven ninety nine. So it can't be more than seven hundred ninety nine euros. In Britain, it's five hundred ninety nine pounds. So this is the, this is it's also interesting to know the upper limit, right? So this is the upper limit of, of what an app costs. Um, and the app, the function of the app is described as, as it, well, it actually does nothing um, except uh, demonstrate to others that, that, that I, am, I am rich. Um, and something on the order of eight of these were sold before it was uh, banned um, the next day. Um, and <clears throat> it's an interesting 
uh, conceptual piece of art. Uh, it's, it is described um, on, uh, on, the, on its dedicated Wikipedia page as a, as a Veblen good. Um, this is after Theodore Veblen, who, who in 1899 wrote a really famous book called The Theory of the Leisure Class and invented or coined such terms as conspicuous uh, consumption. So, so this is, a, a, in some sense, a, a commentary on, uh, on, on, on conspicuous uh, consumption. Um, but it's also um, interesting that something like this would be banned. Uh, and, so, and, and, and there wasn't a reason given. Um, and so you, you, you now get into this area where, 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 where sort of social commentary, so not things that are not, not, not only offensive, but also social commentary. Um, is is uh, is bad. Yeah, as I mentioned, the the one of the most important critiques of, of media colleges um, of walled gardens um, is the notion of lock-in, and and this is a notion that uh, was developed by uh, uh, by Brian Arthur in a, f a famous article from from 1989, the, the lock-in effect, and and this is the this is um, in some sense, a particular kind of a corporate strategy where you have your users, um, uh, there's a number of ways to get users using something, but once they have uh, used it and become reliant on it, then they can't leave it. Or if they leave it, as I mentioned before, the costs are uh, perceived to be so high as to be not, not worth leaving it. And that's where, that's where sort of exploitation can take place. Uh, uh, monopolization, uh, et cetera. And, and um, this is where you can also get into ideas of unfair uh, trade, unfair competition. Um, and there are any number of examples of how um, these, what are called the temptations of the walled garden in business have been abused. Um, and, the, and for example, the um, uh, files any number of different files which you cannot um, use across other operating systems. This came to the fore, came into sort of more into the uh, public realm when um, a lawsuit was filed, a number of lawsuits, I mean, and most famously in Germany, uh, which, which forced Apple to allow its, uh, its iTunes, uh, it's iTunes, so it's iTunes files, it's proprietary files to be played on other devices apart from an, I, apart from an I, iPod or subsequently an iPhone. Um, <clears throat> so, so, the, so you see any number of examples of, of um, being locked in um, and, and not, and, and in some sense becoming uh, numb to it, um, continuing to remain with the product, to continue to remain in, in the ecology. Um, and unable to leave. Um, and then the question is, at what point um, must reg regulators step in? And this is the question right now in Europe um, that is being put to Google uh, over and again. There was a symbolic vote in the European Parliament uh, last, uh, last week um, to break up uh, Google uh, because it is uh, supposedly enjoying uh, uh, unfair uh, competition. Um, the uh, last piece uh, that I want to mention in terms of the platform critique, and we'll now then move gradually now to Twitter, um, is that this critique also has been applied to Twitter. Now, Twitter um, is, in some sense, one of the most open of, uh, of the platforms. Um, you can do so, so much of what one can do on Twitter has not necessarily been dictated by the company. Uh, rather, users um, have taken, have in some sense, um, shaped much of what one does on Twitter. Um, from the use of uh, retweets, from the use of the hashtag, from um, at mentions, all of these particular symbols and user cultures or cultures of use were developed by, by users. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and Twitter, in, in, in some fundamental sense, um, has, always, has been rather malleable. Um, but Twitter, um, not so long ago, has been criticized 
especially when it went to um, to the stock market. Uh, its 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 IPO has been critiqued for now beginning to become uh, quite like a uh, a sort of media ecology in itself. Or, or, or and one of the examples, and this is uh, this is um, uh, in a in a, this is sort of quite a famous footnote in an academic article on 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 Twitter, um, where the uh, where a Twitter researcher this was in the um, Boyd and Crawford piece, Six Provocations about Big Data, where a Twitter researcher, in-house researcher, said, well, actually, if you want to research Twitter and Twitter, use Twitter data, you really have to work there. Um, because the, the, the data that, um, uh, that we stream outside um, is of lesser quality um, and uh, can't rely on it as much uh, than, than if you were inside. So this is, this is the, the crux of the matter, um, that you need to be inside um, in order to, uh, to study the object. So, so you need to be a Facebook user um, or have a Facebook account in order to, uh, in order to study it, uh, in order to get access to, to data. To, you must be logged in. Um, and 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 this is this is the crux of the wall with with the web um, uh, you weren't logged in or you're still not logged in um, seemingly uh, what as we've as we've um, indicated earlier with with Google and studying Google um, one of the better ways to study Google or at least use Google as a as a research machine is to log out uh, and and so so that so that you can see its workings, and that, and that it, as, as opposed to see it working on you, if you will. Um, okay. So what I'm, what I would like to now uh, ask um, is, um, is, uh, so what kind of platform is is, is Twitter, and um, uh, what can we do with it? Um, uh, do we need to be a Twitter user in order to study it? Um, the, the short answer there is is actually this is one of the few, few platforms where the short answer is actually uh, no. Well, it depends what you're what you're studying, but you can uh, gain access to to Twitter data without uh, without being a user. Although um, you there are there are terms of service for the for the API, and you do need a key, uh, but that key can be um, uh, provided by a by a research environment as as ours, as, and so you yourself. I uh, don't necessarily need to uh, to have a to have a Twitter account, um, but um, uh, there are any a number of other terms of service uh, that that do apply, and and I'd, I'd like to I'd like to talk a little bit about that, and then ultimately what I'd like to talk about is when we're studying Twitter, um, or when we're using Twitter data, what is it that we're studying, and 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 there is a trend these days to use Twitter data as I mentioned before to study virtually anything. Um, and Twitter is becoming a, a kind of stand-in for for big data, for big data research, for ideas about big data, um, for uh, using uh, Twitter data um, to uh, output sort of impressive visualizations, um, which then impress on a number of levels. Um, and and the the question is, what kind of commitments are researchers? Um, uh, undertaking when 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 you when when doing this, this sort of work number one and number two what is it that we're studying um, there's a famous uh, study by uh, by the Pew uh, Center for Internet uh, Research which uh, looked into the extent to which uh, one is uh, studying public opinion when one is studying Twitter data and the answer was was no uh, and and it's it is it is rather the demographic of Twitter users is rather skewed. So getting a representative uh, sample as you would get for when doing public opinion research it's, um, is something that, that's, that's, that's very difficult to do um, because, of the, because of the demographics of the users. If you were to try to do that, that would be, a, that would be an interesting research project actually in and of itself, trying to get a kind of uh, 
representative sample out of out of out of uh, out of Twitter users as one would do in public opinion research. So it so then the 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 the, the next question is well is it then good data, and then what then um, what if we're not studying public opinion in the in the traditional sense then what is it that we're studying, um, and uh, and then when you make findings. Uh, how do you ground them? What is it that you know? Um, and is it always, must you always say, well, we're studying Twitter users and how they tweet? Or can you say, no, we're studying um, uh, opinion leaders. We're studying societal influencers. Um, and, then, and then you get into a lot of, also into the, into the kind of marketing language and, 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 uh, and, and ideas about um, what what it is who tweets and is is it is it quite different from from previous findings that would one would make with online data um, yeah so we're gonna I'm, I'm gonna go into those uh, questions um, uh, more specifically after the break so it's a 10 minute break